The purpose of today, really, is, is obviously to put an end to all the speculation that we've had since the, the Fulham game um, and to announce that Ian's contract with Crystal Palace has come to an end um, by mutual consent. Obviously, at this point, you know, I'd like to thank Ian for his tremendous contribution that he's made to the club. You know, he stepped in when our last manager resigned to go to another club. Um, he's somebody who cares about people, he cares about me, he cares about our football club. Um, unfortunately, things have happened that mean we both feel a fresh voice and the lead on the playing side of the club might produce better outcomes. Um, Ian instigated the original conversation. Um, certainly, from our side, we had no intention and never have had any intention of anything other than, than maintaining the continuity at the, at the club. Um, but Ian felt that things at the club weren't working for him. He felt that, that he wasn't getting the support probably to play in the way that he wanted to play and that a different approach might keep us in the division. And before I finish, <coughs> I think what I'd like to say that having arrived at this joint decision very reluctantly and looked at every possible turn solution, we've, we've spent two days chatting about other ways that we might be able to make it work. I'd obviously like to say that I've, I've enjoyed every minute of working with Ian. He's been fantastic for our club, uh, brought us one of the best days in our history. Um, he, he leaves our club with, with his head held very high. I think he's a remarkable man, somebody that, that has, has come forward and done something that you know most people wouldn't do and, and just said, look, we need to talk about the situation. I don't think it's working at the moment. I don't like what I'm seeing. I think you might be better off with somebody who's, who, who can play a style of football that the players might respond to better. And I think it's an incredibly brave person who comes to that. Most people will just carry on taking the money, frankly. Um, and as I say, I'd really like to just put the record straight. You know, we've never fallen out. We speak every day. In fact, on the transfer deadline day, we spoke for... He rang me 123 times. Um, so we've worked together brilliantly. I think we've achieved something that, that has been achieved rarely for the club. Ian and me together feel that maybe we need, we need to move on to progress. Um, so that's a decision that we've, we've very reluctantly come to. Questions? Pass me some water. Sure. Yeah. Any questions? What are your feelings? Um, well, the first is a pride of the job that we've both done. It wasn't easy. Um, Steve, if his last manager wasn't headhunted, um, I wouldn't have been given the opportunity. Should I have left Blackpool anyway? Who knows? But, you know, the chance to work with Crystal Palace was was so exciting for me and still is. But, you know, you've got to look at what I wanted to do, why I wanted to do it. And, and really, we've almost had too much success for me to try and carry on in that way. We need to be able to shut up shop in this division. We need to defend a little bit better. When I talk about attacking and doing that, sometimes it, you know, with the group that we've got, it unsettles them because they were so good at doing other things. But, you know, at the minute, we've got a whole new group there. And I, I just particularly didn't like the way, the second half the other day. You know, I like to in, inspire people and help people. And, and I believe the club's in a fantastic position. I'm very proud of my work with Steve. Um, I'm very tired as well, to be honest with you. I think it's um, part of my my talking with Steve the other evening was about am I the one with the energy left? Am I the one who you know can believe we can stand and, and beat Arsenal and get a draw here and get you know I, I I think that's really important that you keep your dignity and um, with the changes in the squad, I have to hold my hand up that we didn't keep that spirit that got us up. We lost some very important parts of it, but I think we've tried to change too quickly. And um, some of the new lads and at the moment, their attitude and where it is, and, um, you know, I'm finding it slightly annoying and that ain't right. <laughs> so, you know, I think someone fresh coming in right now, maybe would have had more experience at this level if Steve can find someone like that. Then, you know, they got 30 games left. And I understand how wonderful it is for Palace to, to enjoy those games and not have all of this circus following us around. Because at the moment, I'm bitterly disappointed with one or two things that have been said out there. You know, i.e. 
my wife on the bus and, you know, I feel like that. Well, why don't every other manager do it? Because it's not served me well. But, you know, for someone to pick up a paper and write about that is absolute nonsense. I lost my wife, almost lost her through cancer. I'm never going to lose her again. And when I sit with this man and we talk about the team and we, he understands my professionalism, I don't believe that that sort of gutter snipe journalism should um, really affect me anymore. But if it is, I, I have to be honest with this man because the, the way I care is a tad unusual. And I believe I could sell a fridge to an Eskimo if I believed that myself. And I think that's what helped us get there. I think these four gentlemen are totally, totally unique. They're supporters of the club. They put their own many, money in. They've saved it. And if I thought for one minute I wasn't helping and, and seven defeats out of eight, I don't put, particularly feel good enough, even with the group that we've got. And, um, you know, such is life. So I'd rather call a, a meeting in front of all of you to actually sow some solidarity because most of it's been absolute nonsense. Absolutely scary nonsense, in, in fact. Um, and I think there's only one way to do it, really. We've had a good grown-up discussion about what we feel and we both still care immensely about Palace. So is there any more questions? I'd like you to ask anything that you've got on your mind in front of us two, so hopefully it'll be led to, led to bed so Palace can get on with what Palace need to get on with, which is trying to climb a mountain. Ian, was this, was Monday night the catalyst, was it in your back of your mind before Monday night that, that you might be just feeling the time had come? No, I think Monday night, the way the second half went, and what I said at half-time, normally that has, has a, a spur on to people, and um, it didn't, so, you know, I, I told Steve straight away, you know, it, particularly then when the questions I had upstairs and how it is and, you know, that's all you can do. And, you know, I, I care bitterly about Palace, bitterly to the, to the day I die. It's an unbelievable place. Um, and I'm very proud at the moment of my involvement with them. And I wouldn't want to outwear a welcome, if you understand what I mean. When I first came, we were in the championship. We managed to get up and the time it's going to take me to actually work with people and get them to get it out of the back, pass it at the back. We're going to make mistakes in this level. I don't want to do that. And the club and me are on a slightly different agenda. What I want to build and what they need somebody to build is in a different time zone. So, you know, all I can do is be honest with Steve and say, you know, the last thing I want to do now is actually change who I am because the lads know I won't believe in that. And you have to see things through, and this man has done it all his life. He's a very successful man, and, and I want him to continue doing that, and I want to be very proud of my part in that, and I think I can, particularly the way I'm conducting myself now, because to me, that's what it's about. You have to be proud what you can bring to the table, and, you know, maybe a tad more experience. Now they've got this money, maybe that might, if he can encourage someone, and, and I would strongly suggest if someone does want a chance at a Premier League and, and a fresh start with a good group, then they should seriously believe in this because it ain't that much that needs changing. That goal the other day that started the rot was probably pretty sensational, to say the least. And and it's got to be time to change. And I think a new voice, if the boys see that, might help them as well because they've done me proud as well. Have you, have you recommended anyone? Alex was mentioned, yeah, he's out of work, isn't he? <laughs> uh, he's, he's busy promoting his book, I think, isn't he, Steve? Well, you know. Have you put a name to the, to the board of someone that you think could do the job? I don't think that's right for me to say. I, I have spoke to Steve about certain things, but they've made uh, some very good decisions in their time. Ian's certainly somebody that, you know, I'll talk to about that, and certainly somebody that I'll consult over the years. You know, I, I think I've got a friend that... that, that you know, we'll know each other for a very long time, so it's certainly something that, that I would consider very much because I know how much he cares about the club. And what I would say as well, to add to all the things that Ian said, you know, the club haven't got the infrastructure to help an Ian. <coughs> you know, we, we came up very much as a championship club, you know, and the amount of work that went in in the summer was, was extraordinary just to try and get us into, 
I mean, Ian, we were on the phone two, three <coughs> in the morning. Ian was watching player after player. You know, you've got all these new scouting tools now, which are kind of part your salvation and part the, 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 the devil's machines, really, because, you know, you can just endlessly watch players from, from all over the world. And, of course, with the, the, the money you've got available in the Premier League, you've got the potential to get those players. And people are recommending you players and you don't want to be that person that didn't listen to a recommendation. And look, you know, and because we've got such a tiny infrastructure and I didn't put anything in place, you know, I should have, I should have seen that. You know, when we were top of the league and we thought we might go up, you know, I should have put more of a scouting infrastructure in place. You know, so we've, we've asked a whole group of people who are only really used to the championship, just drop them into the, the Premier League and then really said to Ian, well, you've been here once, <laughs> you know, can, can you sort all this out? And as hard as we as we worked i think we realized you know that we we need some we probably need some help you know from somebody that knows the division because even in i think the three years since ian's been there you know it's evolved you know moved on and 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 all the sides are competent they've all got you know our, it, the positive thing for our football is it, it's moving forward you know people play a high pressing game everybody knows how to do it you know, the 11 they put out every Saturday in the Premier League, they're all competent players, they're confident, they know their jobs, you know, and they don't make mistakes and they score extraordinary goals even when you think you're on top, you know, so you won't see two goals like that in the Championship, you know, um, and, and maybe we haven't got that in our side, you know, so we've got to find another way of doing it and Ian's got a certain philosophy he's developed on football, that's why I wanted him, because of the way Blackpool beat all the odds and, and played fantastic football in the Premier League. And maybe we've both just tried to move it on a little bit too too quickly. But Ian's not going to leave his principles behind. And during that time, he just feels that he's lost a little bit of momentum that, that, that he had and, and that we would be better off with somebody else. And it's, it's really as honest and as noble and as decent as that.